got uploaded? No, he didn't. Oh. 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 I have not been baited. We're going King Bach mode. He ain't catching me like this. Ladies and gentlemen. Nah, dude, you know where we should put it? We should put it right here. He'll never see this coming. Look at that genius. Lex Lounge. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's begin, baby. There are very few remakes in COD Zombies that are so fine-tuned and overall so well done that they deserve a retrospective. The Giants is one of them. The Giant is to Shadows of Evil as Town was to Transit and Five was to Kino. <laughs> Get right back into it. On disc map. Locked behind the paywall as DLC, however, the giant was played less than shadows, but given its significance in the story. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is an incorrect statement. That is false. This is false information. Who the f played Shadows of Evil more than the giant at launch? Not me! Boo, fall, fake news, Keemstar, drama alert, boo boo boo. The giant was incredibly important. Dude, I didn't hate the map, but at launch, I definitely played the giant more. Let's just be honest, my slow brain IQ up here, bro. Thing for the casual community. And while it didn't add a lot of new content, it brought with it tons of new lore and managed to reimagine the iconic Darice in a totally new and fresh way. And really, I think the giant is a shining example of just how you should remake a map. So I think it's important first to acknowledge the subtle difference between a remaster and a remake. It's generally agreed upon that the defining difference between these two very similar pieces of work come down to creative liberty. Remasters add value with things like updated graphics, bug fixes, the removal of glitches, and a smoother engine. And a lot of the time these remasters are quite boring because they fail to provide a whole lot of- The giant was pretty shit compared to original Darice, but hold on now, that was still pretty good new value and i wish there was the more to it. activision where we've been given things like modern warfare 2 remastered they are generally underwhelming zombies isn't so notorious for having bad remasters however the series had actually seen a few remade maps before we got to the giants resurrection dlc for black ops 1 BO1's One's re remades were so oh, dude i just love the aesthetic of bo one this just ah oh, it just hits me right in the soul mastered set of world of war maps these I were true it. and much needed remasters wow, we got to enjoy the old favorites world on the updated so black ops 1 engine free of horrible glitches of world of war quick revive worked in solo the Wonderwaff didn't glitch your jug, and there were no black hole gravity zombies. But really, that and an updated weapon roster was all the Black Ops 1 remaster brought. They were necessary, but they didn't provide the same value that something like the giant. 2011, bro. I was there the day that came out. That's almost 10 years ago now. The giant is not this, and it's safe to call it a true make. And so a remake is the other side of the same coin. A remake often has all the things we just talked about, but it takes more creative liberties to improve the map. A remake sir. takes the same original recipe, yes, but it sir. looks at it and asks, what can we do to make this better? The Giant, as the third iteration of Darice, not only worked, but succeeded beyond any I always say that Garad Krovey is like the inverse of the Giant. It's like a better Darice. That's why, like, dude, I think for the third time for Darice coming out, motherfuckers love this map. I loved it, but not as much as everyone else. I thought it was great, but I was like, ah, okay, lads, let's, let's relax now. Well, the cornerstone feature of the giant is its lore and story. Oh, uh, what made it feel so new was the fact that it was a return to somewheres that we had already been, but with a fresh set of eyes. That is to say, it's not simply the same story taking place here. We know how Doris goes. Richtofen teleports to the moon. Samantha's dog Ooh. Fluffy gets turned into a hell. Oh, Chronicles are fuck f f. Just fucking f, bro. I don't even remember this shit, bro. Town and Maxis gets sent to the ranch. See, the giant happens to take place at the same factory that we've been to, but it's a different time and setting with different characters. Well, sort of. It starts with that exact same storyline. It's weird how they used it as a continuation, I guess. 
But it's familiar with Ultimus Rictus and they'll sending be like... away Maxis and Samantha. But then our new heroes who were revealed in Origins show up. Depsy, Nikolai, and Takeo travel here and confront this alternate oh, this timeline. Oh, this piano be going Rictus. right now. As an audience member, knowing what is played out here, it is so cool to see our three heroes confront him about his actions. They reference BO1's chain of events, which must Lex not be lounge be wild. And as Richtofen asks, Do you know? Who I am? So cocky, so confident and maniacal, they almost mock him, which in a way is a mock to the very- They just be LOLing right now. <laughs> they just be LOLing. The old formula of zombies. It's literally saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that formula, but we're the new cool guys here and we're here to- Yeah, LOLing the fucking MR6. <laughs> Why isn't that in every fucking zombies cutscene? They're like having some serious fucking ass moment and then they're just holding the worst fucking gun in the game. And I really think it's in this cutscene. Doesn't he use an M- Oh my god, I swear to god, if he uses an MR6- Does he use an MR6 to kill him? No. Where Jason Blundell no, and the I forgot. team completely no. and utterly dispelled no, he's, he's gonna the use the MR6. of Black Ops 1. They take that simple, confused, and shaky storyline no, and they no, just please don't do it, don't out do it. of its misery. <laughs> and they use it again. Like, the gun shadow is floating right now. Do you see that? He Much has a KRM, story. okay? After like, this, we okay. see Richtofen do something to the body, which is really foreshadowing the blood vials as well as the entire quest that these four are about to undertake. Go. It's a beautiful cutscene that grounds and finally reinvents the entire series. And I gotta say, Richtofen shooting his alter ego is one of the most memorable moments in the entire zombie storyline. And, and it's so like contrived as well. Like it, that just that shit just don't even need to happen. It's one of the most storyline based maps in zombies history. Why the fuck, chat? Why the fuck is the mob that are playing on this map? Does anybody even know? What's the fractures? The fractures? Yeah, that yeah, the fractures are my fucking ass. And the lore continues with the start of the map. As soon as you spawn in, the dialogue is some of the best that any map ever has. Richtofen is manic from his actions. The dialogue between the characters is amazing as well. And I think the map really starts working to build relationships between the four here. This marks the beginning of them actually becoming close. And we also get tons more of foreshadowing of what is to come. The talk of a special device, which is the summoning key and Richtofen's plan to set things right. It all starts here in this new iteration of Dream. Fucking Christ. Let's relax. Dervis feels gloomy and dark, where the giant feels mysteriously inspiring. It's covered in snow, and overall, the giant is just beautiful. I still think Dervis still has this look to it that looks way better, even on World at War. It really incites the imagination, managing to sound like the beginning of oh. something new. And that's exactly what the giant is. It even takes the round change melody from Mob of the Dead, which is so good I have no problem hearing again. Subtle things like that are pretty cool. Music, which gives the feeling of a grand epic adventure of something unfolding, there's a very interesting remix Let's for get Beauty some of Annihilation music, that baby. manages to work really well with the map. And lastly, there's the game over music. It's nothing groundbreaking, but is a very consistent sound that we will hear throughout Black Ops 3. And so overall- Oh man, that's such an iconic sound. BL3 really fucking killed it. Like, honestly, I love BL3. I think the soundtrack is very impactful in There's just not even one bad map. Atmosphere. Even Revelations and is okay. And I just okay. need to say it again. It is a beautiful map. The graphics are so different to the original Doris that it doesn't even feel fair to compare them. Of course, the giant is technically better, but what I love about the giant is that the graphics are different. It almost feels like it has 1% comic book in it, and I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's the way I always viewed it. Artistically, it's a very different take from the original Doris, but it works great. Hello, motherfucker. Look at this piece of shit. <laughs> Look at him. The giant didn't really feel like it set out to add a lot, but there still is enough new content that changes the overall dynamic of 
gameplay. The most important change Ooh, made violent. here is the addition of Double Pack a Punch. Double Pap adds a new dynamic. I love the original BO3 camos, dude. BO3 killed it. I really hope Cold War can do the shit that Black Ops 3 did, man. The Giants iteration of Jerese really changes the formula. You're not relying on the Wonder Waff, despite it still being the most effective weapon on the map, and I like that. It's worth your while to gamble for it on the box, but you'll be perfectly fine to simply use any- Bruh, the fucking Wonder Waff under Reese you literally never get. In BO3, I feel like you get it way more often, but holy shit! You be right. A double pack a punched weapon. F. It just feels like a nice casual map that you can train on, and I like that. And the addition of gobble gum also adds a new dynamic. Where most BO3 maps can be broken with megas, the giant is so simple that the use of OP gums does little more than take away from the enjoyment and purpose of the map. That is to say, because the main objective is setting up, when you use megas, you cheat yourself out of the map's experience. And so not only does this mean that players aren't in encouraged to use megas on this map but they're actually discouraged yes and no if you're going for high rounds fuck classic gobble gums bro fuck that shit i hate the waff i hate the waff just using it for high rounds l o l w bro this is also one of the only maps where Treyard offered players the chance to get free perks by teleporting the free drop spawner will occasionally give a perk bottle which can fill your slot with an additional perk it's for so fucking rare now oh my god i think they patched it. furthermore the map has a small easter egg that can actually allow you to reveal another perk machine by throwing down monkey bombs in the teleporters you get an origins robot head laser to reveal a perk machine hidden yes in the sir snow. baby it's yes sir really cool However, I think that it was a bad addition as they- <laughs> I fucking agree, Pat. It kind of fucking sucks at the end of the day. I wish they- I wish it would have, re like, revealed two perks side by side. Not just one. Then it would have been sick. Made the perks random. Leaving it to chance is very frustrating as the two perks are quite polar. Deadshot and Stamina Up are both very helpful, but only for specific stamina strategies. Stamina Up is way fucking better. If you want to train, better. you need Stamina Up. If you want to camp, you need Deadshot. And having to reset for it is annoying. I think it would have made a lot more sense to either have it reveal two perks, or maybe just make it a Wonder Fizz machine that only has Stamina Up in it. You just fucking said what I said, motherfucker. Deadshot in it. While a nice callback to Zombie's first Easter egg, I'm sad to say that overall, this is actually pretty bad. The lore that we received from this at the time was very exciting. Maxis is able to pinpoint which dimension we're in, and there's so much going on about what he wants to do and where he's at, and he's a different timeline version, and... In retrospect, the giant needed way fucking more, bro. Holy shit. Where is Adam? Oh, it literally leads to nothing. It was a cool idea that had zero payoff in the end. But second and worst is the actual in-game reward. Beating this Easter egg provides you with the Annihilator Specialist weapon. While theoretically infinite in ammo, this is a horrible weapon that serves no purpose whatsoever. We introduced the Annihilator because we just love and think it fits all the maps. The Annihilator needed to just burn. I wish the Annihilator was never made. Imagine if the Giant got like the flamethrower from like Black Ops 3 multiplayer. That shit would have been sick. Why they give us the Annihilator? Who the fuck cares? Um, what? This is one exactly. of the single biggest oversights in the entirety of Black Ops 3. And this only looks worse when we consider what the other specialist Black Ops 3 weapons are. The exactly. Apothecary Sword, Ragnarox, the Skull of Non Sopway, and a Baby Dragon Zoom Fist Gauntlet. Now, I got invited to Treyarch to play Dr. Eisendrak early because of- What is this? I'm literally about to start crying. This is a threat. He said they basically just had to take one of the MP specialist weapons and that this one felt like the best choice. Why is he bringing up the fucking video again, bruh? Lex Lounge is upset. First of all, Darius in World at War is known for being the only zombies game with a flamethrower. And secondly, it would make thematic sense as you were Like, bro, he's saying how a flamethrower should come back. This is just making me upset. Retrieve the weapon from a flaming 
furnace. So I can totally respect the fact that they couldn't make something new, but I find it very disappointing that we didn't get a flamethrower. Still though, Overall, the giant is a sound map clone. And so instead of making the map bigger, they made it deeper. They didn't expand upon the actual location like we would see in Black Ops 4 Zombies with Tag or Alpha Omega. Instead, they chose to keep it exactly as it was. And this makes it feel like a remaster. Yet with new storyline, characters, and an atmosphere so different they even changed the weather, they managed to create something truly inspired. And I think in a lot of ways, the giant saved the relationship release of black ops 3 zombies it really did if shadows of evil was the only map this fucking game would have sucked i 100 percent agree i 100 percent agree that is a correct statement this was so big and complicated and a lot of people hated it on launch if you think otherwise you're fucking wrong you imbeciles listen to me okay listen to me okay the giant saved us now it's important to remember that this still is a remake so it's not going to end up in the top upper echelon of s tier but it is still a great map it was an iconic map that again set the stage for black ops 3 zombies and i really think the game would not have been the same without it and so with that said where is he gonna put it where is he gonna fucking put it chat uh a my final rating for the giants is an 8.3 out of 10. A fucking genius! But as a remake, genius. I would actually like to give it another rating. Okay, now hold on now. I think it's kind of interesting to make a tier list entirely for remakes and remasters and to consider the fact of what they are. The context of being a remake and remaster in this new tier list, I would actually give it a 9.4 out of 10. What the fuck is this? I could understand this, but A is where it belongs. The Giant is truly an S tier remake. Oh, and for all of you asking on size, the Giant weighs. Fuck this man! I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat with him one day. City of God's coming after you. I got, I got them on myself. He's in at one, Doris. Anyway, with all that said, thank you. Guys. Did you just fuck it? Did he just do that? Did he, no, he did not just do that. He did not just fucking do that. He did not just fucking do. That. Guys, so much for watching. Um, if you are new to the channel, please don't fucking sub. I'm gonna skip this bullshit. Yeah, yeah, and then use me as your fucking promotion of your fucking Fall Guys, cause I'm a Fall Guys fucking legend. As always, peace out, you freaking nerds. Fuck, I'm about to get a heart attack.